Hello and welcome. Today we'll be talking about the T28 Artemis per night flashlight. This is the 21700 rechargeable type battery light and it has three types of LEDs inside of it and has a white Cree LED inside of it, an IR850 LED inside of it, and also an IR940 wavelength LED inside of it. The white mode goes for about 650 plus lumens on the flood and for the spots is about 360 plus lumens. Runtime is going to be about an hour and 35 minutes with a beam distance of about 525 meters or 572 yards. Intensity is going to be 69,600 candela. The impact resistance is going to be 1 meter. The water ingress protection is around IP66 rated. Working voltage is going to be 3.0 to 4.2 volts. Dimension is going to be 182 to 196 millimeters in length with a 25.4 millimeter body diameter and a 54 millimeter head diameter. Net weight is going to be 200 grams or 7.05 ounces, excluding the battery. Here we have the Bernight T28 Artemis on the table. We have its included battery with the USB-C charging port on the battery. And we have the tail switch adapter here for a rail mounted system and the box here. Here we have the Artemis T28 light. We have the main body, the head and the bezel here. We have the switch selector on the top here from white to AR or rather IR850. IR940 here and you simply move the selector switch and you can change the type of wavelength for the IR and the white light. On the back is the tail switch here which you push to turn on the light and then you also have a dimmable switch here which can be turned. I don't know if you can see that but we can turn it and change the brightness there. There is PWM with this light as you can see on the uh, camera there. We're at the lowest mode here, and we'll go to the highest mode. And that's how you use the UI in the rear tail switch here. On the front, we do have some crenulations on the uh, bezel here, as well as the head, which is changeable for the beam type. So we can have it as a direct beam here, or we can have it as a fully floody type of beam. It's not the best type of uh, beam profile for the floody, or the thrower beam, but it does work for getting light out to a very far distance. We don't have an IR mode on our camera, so we can't view the IR850 or the 940 yet, but we'll f figure that out later on in a further nighttime demonstration. The lens is plastic here in the front, and let's open up the tube here, and we can see the O-ring here on the cap, and the aluminum cut threads, they appear to be square cut here, along with a tail spring here. We have our 21700 battery inside. And we have the tube, which we can see kind of inside here. We can see the spring at the end there. Let's put this back together and get some beam shots. Okay, we're back shooting an aperture 2.8, 24 frames per second, ISO is 5000 with a white balance of 5000K, a Panasonic GH4, 12 to 35 millimeter lens. Here we have the light on full flood mode at the highest portion here. And if we decide to dial it down here to the lowest portion, we dim it down, dim it further until we have almost nothing to see on the camera, but you can see it in the dark here. If we do the focus ring here, you can kind of see out front about 20 feet, there's a log. And this is at the focus beam. Let's go ahead and dial it back up to the highest mode here. As you can see, this beam really shines focused on a lot of areas, but uh, it's not very floody. And I don't mean a lot of areas, I mean in a specific area. So there's the log about 20 feet in front. There's the back of the yard. That's about roughly 50 feet away. So you can see this thing throws quite a distance out here. Here's the brook on the left. So quite a focused beam. Let's do it at like a medium flood. That should be good for a spot. Yeah, 
and you can see a lot of detail out here, even though there's some fog out here and a little bit of rain right now. Let's open it all the way up to the flood, like we had it before. So you can see it lights up a large swath. So it does a good job of illuminating a lot in front. I'm going to go back to focusing here. And this is all, all the way at focus. You can see a profile of the actual LED there in a square. My right, final thoughts on the T28 Artemis light from Brin Knight. It's an okay light. There are a couple things that I have issues with, namely the waterproofing issue with the tail cap here. When I submerge this into a pot of water for a little bit, for about maybe a minute or so. I found that water was getting into the tail cap here and it disabled the actual electronics inside. I had to put this in a bowl of rice for a few days to get it to dry out. Once it dried out, it started working again. So this ingress point here for water is not very good for the light. Uh, it does mention that it's IP66 rated. So assuming that this could be submerged for a very brief time, it did not pass that test. If this was in rain, I'd worry about water getting in through the tail cap or if you had to submerge this light for whatever reason on your weapon, which I don't recommend doing. If you don't have to submerge this, it might survive the rainfall. The front end part too, the bezel, I noticed was a little loose when I got it, so I had to retighten it down. And as a result, water did get kind of inside the inner ring here, which is not good either. So I don't know if I got something that was not tightened from the factory or lemon or whatnot, but that is something to keep in mind with the Burnite T28 Artemis. Also this floody spot beam, it's a smooth action. However, with firearms, you're gonna have vibration and vibrations could theoretically throw this out of alignment from your specified point. So I would like to see a little bit more of a resistance to engaging the floody and focused beam on the light here. Also with the switch, it's a decent toggle switch. It works well, responds well. But again, with vibrations and potentially knocking this light against a tree or a rock or something out in the woods while you're hunting, I would like to see a, another little detent on top of here, like a little button switch to push down and lock this toggle switch into place so that if you knock it into something, it would not change on you because you potentially don't want to change your IR rating or your white light if you're trying to hunt with night vision. That would not be a fun time at night. And lastly, but not least, I don't know how well this thing is potted for, let's say, vibrations again from a firearm. For example, Surefire Lights, they have a specific rating for firearms, and they are resistant to shock and vibrations from a firearms. They don't list any sort of rating on this, that, even though they say it's a hunting light. Now, I don't know anything about hunting, so maybe I could be wrong in this department, but my logic would be I would want something rated for shock and vibration if I'm out hunting with a firearm, and this is marketed as a hunting type of light, especially with the IR modules on here. That being said, overall the light's okay. I don't think I could recommend it as is with the problem of the tail switch ingress for the water and the water getting in the top here and some design issues. I think they could work out better in the future. And that's all I have to say about the T20 Artemis. Thank you for watching and enjoy your day.